What's up guys? Do we have a machine to talk to you today about? Well, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. Roll the footage. Vander Hall is expanding. We're doubling the size of our factory to make room for some of our greatest ideas ever. The three-wheeled Venice Off-Road Edition. Is not one of them. Introducing the all-electric, four-wheeled Vanderhall Navarro. Well played, Vanderhall. Well played. If I had to talk about that three-wheel machine as an off-road vehicle, I think I'd just have to end the video now. All right, so now you know that this video is all about the new Vanderhall Brawley GTS. What a machine. But before we start getting into that, let me show you a little bit about what Vanderhall is all about and what they've been building for quite some time. They are actually located out of Provo, Utah, I believe, which is only about three and a half to four hours north of St. George, where we are located. I've actually seen a couple of these cars um, in our town, and I've seen one up close in a parking lot that I got to look at, and it was very, very nice and well put together. I don't know if it's the kind of car that I would be wanting to get or anything, but it is a extremely really nice put together three-wheel car. All right, guys, let's start talking about the Vanderhall Brawley GTS. So before I do, I'm going to roll their actual introduction video that they posted on YouTube um, about the new rig. So let's watch that, and then we'll jump into it and uh, start talking about all the specs and the different things, the pros, and I'm even going to mention a couple of the cons, or let's just say some questions that are kind of unanswered to see what you guys have to say about that in the comments below. So let's roll the video. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're just talking about the one model, um, the Brawley, and that's it. Um, I'm sure, like you saw at the beginning of the video, they have a Navarro, and I'm sure they'll have a few different models, and I'm sure you'll have a different accessory packages, I'm sure you'll have different, you know, lines of uh, models and the cost and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to be talking mainly about the Brawley tonight, so let's talk about specs. So I'll throw up on the screen. So it looks like we're sitting at 112 point five inches um, basically of wheelbase and that's from the center rim of the front to the center rim of the rear and the whole width or the length of the car is hundred and forty seven point five inches so I'll throw up a couple other specs of a couple other cars so it just gives you in perspective of what we're looking at as far as other UTVs go um, it looks like it's gonna have a height of sixty nine point five inches and a width of 76 inches with 18 inches of ground clearance. So 18 inches of ground clearance right off the factory, pretty dang impressive. The only question is that we have to ask, is it gonna need shock therapy after a few hundred miles? It seems like all the machines these days start sagging in no time after you buy them from the factory and uh, that's just the way it goes. So that's a good question. I wonder if that's gonna be needed. And it looks like the approach angle is 90 degrees. So pretty good approach angle. It looks like the tires do stick past the front just a little bit and so on. Not too bad um, when we're talking as far as the specs. What, what I already can see is a big bonus in this car is when you're not dealing with a motor, you're able to get a shorter wheelbase and four seats because you're not dealing with any of that. So kind of interesting, just something I'm taking away looking at their website right now. So let us know what you guys think just about that when it comes to the dimensions of the vehicle themselves. 
the 18 inches of ground clearance, so pretty impressive. The next thing I want to talk about is basically the power plant because that's one huge thing that everybody's going to be asking. What's the power plant like? Well, let's see. The GTS numbers are 404 horsepower. 404 horsepower. I'm telling you guys, that's, that's insane. That's beyond awesome, incredible, great, amazing. To go along with that, you've got torque of 480. So as far as the torque goes, again, amazing. Um, miles on one charge, they say 200. So 200 plus. So I don't know if they're taking into account of hard riding, just slow, medium trail riding. So if you're trail riding at Glamis or whatever, I don't know how many miles you're gonna get if you're on it hard all the time in the sand compared to like mountain trail riding. That's probably an answer we'd like to get from Vanderhall themselves. So according to the trim level, it says right on the website that that can change. So you'll have pricing change probably with the trim, of course. So let's just talk about their general. It looks like pretty well uh, loaded model. Um, it says four individually controlled electric motors. So basically each tire um, will be turned by its own motor. You'll also have 35 inch tires. Guys, 35 inch tires are right off the factory. Not too bad. Uh, 18 inch wheels. There you go. That's looking good. Heat and air conditioning. Heat and air conditioning. Might as well call this a mini Jeep. Now, it's a UTV, but you have heat and air conditioning. Sealed cabin with filter. That means no more dust. I don't care who you are, but everybody knows if you can go out in the mountains, ride all day and whatnot and not deal with dust, it's a win-win in my book. Leather wrapped steering wheel, Bluetooth enabled sound system. So it looks like it's gonna have a sound system. No other details on who makes it or you know who's putting it in, anything like that. 22 inches of suspension travel, not bad. It doesn't say if it's the same in the front as it is in the rear but 22 inches of suspension travel. So if it's 22 inches all the way around the car, awesome. So I don't know if that changes or what. I'm guessing for right now, we'll just say it's 22 inches of travel all the way around the car. And then the internal bypass shocks. So it doesn't even say who makes the shocks, if they're Fox shocks, if they're whoever shocks, I don't know. I'm not seeing it right here. All right, let's go on the interior a little bit. So I'm post a picture of the interior. They aren't showing a whole lot. From what I can see already is that they have an option for bypass belts. So if you want to put in harnesses, um, they have a nice sleek, clean look. Um, from what I read, you can remove the top, the sunroof part. It looks like you have a very nice dash. It looks like pretty well put together, kind of like a car on the inside um, versus then, you know, versus more of your standard UTVs and what they look like on the inside. Um, gauges look simple. Styles look simple. Everything looks pretty simple and clean. It looks good. So let's get into the powertrain. So here's the powertrain and this is how it's going to work for the front and back, I, I'm guessing. Um, four electric motors, 300 volt, uh, motor inverter, gear train, brakes, cooling system housed in a single unit. So it looks like the whole unit's built in, like everything you get is built in one unit front and back. Um, they have something kind of covered up on their website as you can see as I'm showing you right now. It says use of advanced lubricants and materials, I think is what it's saying. It means zero maintenance for up to, I want to say what it looks like is 10 years. Very interesting. Might be something to take into consideration. Um, as far as the energy, like as far as the um, power plant and what's going to be powering those motors, it looks like it's got advanced battery conditioning system, extends cold weather range and increases battery life cycle. Available DC fast charging can charge up to 80% capacity in under an hour. So that's a very, we'll go back to that because we're going to talk about a couple of the, the, the cons with, with getting a car like this. All right, so now let's talk about the price point. So on the top, they said that the Brawley is priced from $34,900 and fifty dollars so there you go 34 950 so 35 grand plus tax all that kind of stuff and you can reserve one now for a hundred bucks all right guys so now let's talk about the cons of electric vehicles in general when it comes to utvs 
Um, and these are cons that I feel like are towards all electric type UTV stuff, not necessarily just the Vanderhall um, Brawley GTS. So the first thing I want to talk about is just basically a power source. You know, it's great if you're getting 200 plus miles, um, you're able to go out and come home and charge, that's fine. But let's talk about those trips that you want to take out to Glamis or up in the mountains for three, four days or a whole week. Um, where are you going to charge it at and how are you going to charge it? Yeah, you have generators. Yeah, you have quiet time. If you do a lot of riding, um, you might get to the point that it will be all night while it's charging, which means you have to run the generator or whatnot. You don't have charging stations centered all around the mountain or all around the place at Glamis. So I think that's a real con and I think it's something to be concerned about for a while. Um, I just don't know what they're going to do to fix that. So regardless on getting 200 plus miles, I feel like up in the mountains, joyriding, going slow and maybe scenery type riding where you're looking at scenery everywhere and stuff like that, you might get more than the 200 miles. But I kind of feel like, who knows, if you're out in the sand dunes like pushing it hard all the time and ripping up and down the sand dunes, you might get under 200 miles. But at the end of the day, what's your power source? I think you'd really need to look at that. Toy haulers have their built-in generators. You can bring generators and so on and so on, but you can't run them all the time. And you won't want to run them 24 seven, especially if you're running them to you know, power your AC unit on your trailer and so on, it might not do both, I don't know. Um, the next thing is, is just long term. If you have the car for a long time and you plan on keeping it for a long time and say it goes out of warranty, which they did not mention, I'm not sure if there's a warranty on it and how long that is, um, what's it gonna cost to fix? So if you break the front whole housing of the motor and all that stuff that's built in the front and then there's a whole other unit with two motors in the rear with everything attached to it if you break something like that or if it goes down what's it going to cost you to fix i mean what kind of repairs are we looking at um, is would be a big concern for me and then also being able to fix it yourself um, we don't you know i personally don't know much about electric cars and i don't know much about getting into all that stuff and I usually like to work on all my gas powered stuff and I can do majority of the stuff myself. So that kind of leaves a question mark for me if I was looking at buying this vehicle. The other thing is damage. So if you're out rock crawling or you're out doing things and you roll this vehicle and everybody says, oh, you've got insurance, they'll take care of it. Yeah, but you guys never talk about what your premiums look like month to month after that accident. So that's the biggest thing for me. You put that thing on its side, it can rip up all those panels. There looks like there's a lot of glass, the roof. You can have all sorts of damage causing some serious issues um, with the vehicle and some serious expensive costs to repair it or always you know, replacing it, so on and so on. I, I would be really concerned about what it's gonna cost to repair. You roll over a gas powered machine like this one here, the KRX, you could tweak the cage, you could do something to the door. You can switch out door panels, you can switch out the cage. Um, different things like that. Just a simple on the side type rollover rock crawling or something like that might do some significant damage to this vehicle and I'd be concerned about that. And yes, like I said before, insurance is great but your premiums will go up if you keep on cashing in on wrecked vehicles all the time and nobody seems to you know, talk about that. So the last one I want to mention is basically um, the accessory support that you're going to get. You're not going to find many accessories and different things coming from places like Rocky Mountain, Super ATV, and all those places probably for quite some time. Why? Because there won't be enough cars out there to probably make it worth their while. I could be wrong, but it's going to take years down the road to start seeing a bunch of extra parts. So if you want to customize your vehicle and do a bunch of stuff to it, you're probably going to be stuck doing that yourself and customizing your own parts or building your own stuff to do things like that. Or you're just going to leave it alone. I don't know. We all seem to like to tinker with our toys and, and change them up and make them look different and all that kind of stuff. So I just don't feel that support's gonna be there for quite some time, which is something why I might hold off on this car for a few years to see what it does um, before I might be more interested in maybe purchasing it. So anyways, those are our final thoughts on the cons along with all the good stuff that we shared in this video. Let us know in the comments below what you think. And make sure whatever you pack in, you pack out. And make sure you also check out Joe's last video about safety. So if you're new to the industry, on the trails and whatnot, you can know the hand signals um, to know what to do for safety um, as far as that goes. Also, just generally being careful in your UTV to keep everybody else safe and you safe. Um, 
and everybody else's family safe while out on the trail. So check out that video if you haven't. And until next time, this is Garrett with Deranged Off-Road.